Hello! Welcome back! You can't see my face! It's over here. Here it is. Here's my face. You can see it now. Okay. Now we're going to read part one of uh, Tablet 3 of the Epic of Gilgamesh, entitled Preparations for the Expedition of the Forest to Cedar. To the Forest of Cedar. <laughs> Preparations for the Expedition to the Forest of Cedar. The elders of Uruk the Sheepfold spoke to Gilgamesh, and they said, To Uruk's quay, come back in safety. Do not rely, O Gilgamesh, on your strength alone. Look, Lord, and look long and hard. Land a blow you can count on. Who goes in front saves his companion. Who knows the road protects his friend. Let Ankidu go before you. He knows the journey to the forest of cedar. He is tested in battle and tried in combat. He shall guard his friend and keep safe his companion. Ankadu shall bring him safe home to his wives. Gilgamesh has many wives. So interesting. So the, the elders in the previous tablet, they were like, no, 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 don't go, don't go. And Gilgamesh is like, yes, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. And the elders are like, no, don't go, don't go. And Gilgamesh was like, yes, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. And then the elders are like, no, don't go, don't go. And then Gilgamesh was like, yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. And then, 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 then you know, triumph. No really conclusion. It's just, it repeats three times. <laughs> and then I guess they're convinced. And so now they say, okay, if you're going to go, put on Kudu in front of you and he'll protect you. So, you know, the elders have a change of heart. Uh... Let Ankudu go before you. He knows the journey to the forest of the cedar. He's tested in battle and tried in combat. He shall guard his friend and keep safe his companion. Ankudu shall bring, save, bring him safe home to his wives. To Ankudu. In our assembly, we place the king in your care. You bring him back and replace him in ours. Gilgamesh opened his mouth to speak, saying to Ankudu, Come, my friend, let us go to the palace sublime into the presence of the great queen, Ninsun. Ninsun is clever and wise, well-versed in everything. She will set our feet in steps of good counsel. Seems very wise. You're going to go on a big expedition. You should pray to the goddess Ninsun. The goddess Ninsun. Taking each hand in hand, Gilgamesh and Ankudu went to the palace sublime. Into the presence of the great queen, Ninsun. Gilgamesh rose and entered before her. So I'm going to pause this here to look up the Wikipedia page of Ninsun because uh, that would seem to be relevant information and I don't know exactly who Ninsun is. Ninsun. In Sumerian mythology, Ninsun, the lady wild cow, is a goddess best known as the mother of the legendary hero Gilgamesh. <laughs> so, Ninsun is his mother, right? He's two-thirds god, one-third man. So, Gilgamesh is going to his mother and he's going to ask for advice. Um, if I were editing this more, more like, fancifully, I would put a picture of the goddess Ninsun, like, over here. Over, over here. But, uh, I'm not editing these. So, you can imagine that I'm editing them and you're on your computer. You could be a good good thinker and open up a new tab and listen to me while looking at pictures of the goddess Ninsun because my face is not that interesting at the moment. Okay. <laughs> so, the myths. Uh, so she's a cow goddess. Uh, that, that's basically all. She's Gilgamesh's mother. She's a cow goddess, fertility goddess. Basically all of the goddesses are the same goddess. They're all this goddess of, of fertility and femininity and, and uh, fecundity. You know, the milk. The milk of the cow. Uh, is what Gilgamesh ate. Okay, so Gilgamesh goes to Ninsun. Gilgamesh rose and entered before her. Said Gilgamesh to her, to Ninsun, I shall tread, O Ninsun, bold as I am, the distant path to the home of Humbaba. I shall face a battle I know not. I shall ride a road I know not. I beseech you, give me your blessing for my journey. Let me see your face again in safety and return glad at heart through Uruk's gate. Please, Mom, keep me safe. On my return, I will celebrate the new year twice over. Big deal. He says it twice. You know when things get repeated that they're important. That's this thing about repetition, because it was orally repeated, and, and uh, I'm repeating that. I said that last last 
tablet. But yes, this oral repetition of important themes is important because it sticks in your mind and you get this rhythm going. And so much of what this is is about the rhythm of it and, and you know, things. I will celebrate the new year twice over. I wonder how many more times we're going to hear that phrase. I will celebrate the New Year's festival twice over. Let the festival take place. Let the merriment begin. Let drums resound in your presence. So, Mother, protect me. I'm going to go kill Humbaba, and then I will bring you back great gifts, and the drums will resound in your presence. I'm going to have a big party. A really big party. I want to have a big New Year's festival like Gilgamesh and slay some oxes. The wild cow Nin son listened long and with sadness to the words of Gilgamesh, her son, and Ankadu. Into the bathhouse she went seven times. She bathed herself in water of tamarisk and soap wort. Nin son, so that's interesting. Nin son is bathing. Uh, goddesses can do that because <laughs> they have bodies. Funny. She donned a fine dress to adorn her body. She chose a jewel to adorn her breast. Having her cap, she adorned her tiara, the harlots, the ground. So she has many harlots that just live in her temple, i.e. she's got many priestesses that live in her temple. Isn't that just like a crazy thing? So like Gilgamesh is going to this temple, and he's praying to his mother to give him good fortune, and then he wants to go and do these heroic deeds and then bring her back riches to make many sacrifices to her. This is a temple, right? This is, this is making a deal with the totality of the world. He's, he's bargaining with the collective powers of life. And, and in this, this chamber room that houses, you know, life incarnate, <laughs> fertility incarnate, there are prostitutes. These people who are viscerally, viscerally showing you their fertility, right? And embodying everything that fertility means this you know procreative ability and so they're holy they're they're really really holy and you know perhaps the economics of the temple is is paying money for sex but but it's not the same kind of prostitution that we see today paying money for sex it's 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 a way of channeling the the fertile powers of the universe <laughs> and and comprehending what that means on, on a civilization-wide level. You know, this is the temple of the city. Um, I, I, I can't emphasize this enough, how, how remarkable of a kind of institution this is. I'm not saying it's justified, but that it's very remarkable in terms of the, the message of reality that it gives. So, <laughs> that's my soapbox for that. So she donned a fine dress to adorn her body. She chose a jewel to adorn her breast. Having put on her cap, she donned her tiara, the harlots, the ground. She climbed the staircase and went up to the roof. On the roof, she set up a censer to Shamhash. Scattering incense, she lifted her arms to appeal to the sun god. Why did you afflict my son Gilgamesh with so restless a spirit? So... Here's this opposition, male to female. You know, the, the mother says, no, don't go do this thing. Don't kill this monster, which is the embodiment of fertility, just like myself. Don't do that, my son. <laughs> That's a terrible idea. But then you've got this masculine Samhash, the son, right? And so this is evidence of, of the solarization of religion that took place over the, the earliest recorded history that we have, right? Prior, prior to recorded history, uh, you didn't, you didn't have these kind of great solar historical characters, these male heroes. And they're, they're guided by the sun. The sun is their, their beacon, right? This, this masculine force of energy, as opposed to the, the moon, the constantly changing moon, the much more fluid moon, etc., etc. So Gilgamesh is, is one of our first solar heroes, masculine solar heroes. And so you have the opposition between fertility and the sun. Scattering incense, she lifted her arms in appeal to the sun god. Why did you afflict my son Gilgamesh with so restless a spirit? And uh, if you want to hear his answer, click over there. Next episode.